afternoon, everyone, and thank you for zooming in from Joburg, from KZN, and right here with us from the Western Cape. And uh, from the RSVP list, I could see that, and I've noticed that we have alumni from our school joining us. We have um, current students joining us, as well as friends of the GSB. So we're really excited about having this conversation with you. And thank you for joining me as I chat with my colleague, adjunct professor um, Grant Seif. And we are going to be talking about his new book titled Passion, Power, Purpose, and Engaging with Strategy in Your Organization and in Your Life. So this is really important. You see, I haven't read any strategy books, and I've read quite a few, but I haven't read any strategy books that embrace behavior. And uh, I believe it's like that psychology has to play an important role in the mind of the strategist. It's not only about changing how people think, but it's about changing how people feel. And when we start to introduce this behavioral or orientation to strategy, we can make strategic change happen. And that's why the title of the book is very behavioral in orientation. How do we ignite passion? How do we focus on our purpose? And I'm not just speaking at an organizational level, I'm speaking at a personal level. And strategy empowers us to harness our passion, to focus on our purpose and get there. So I think about strategy as empowering, and it's so important that we have a behavioral orientation in my view. I believe that that's what my book does. It really does try and connect the head and the heart and you know what you need to do next, of course, is we need to engage. And that's about hands, head, heart, and hands. And I like to think that's, that's really what the STEG program does, Strategic Thinking and Execution for Growth at TGSP. And it's what my book does. Can you share more about resilience and strategy and, and, and take us through that? You know, I wrote the book before the pandemic, but I didn't get published until the pandemic was already, had already taken hold. And so before the book was published, I made sure that it was updated because here was the perfect opportunity to strategize, to be able to be relevant in the face of a shock in a changing world. And this was a pandemic sized shock. And, and so the book really is designed to address those kinds of shocks from a position of strategic relevance and resilience. You know, when we think about strategy in a very pragmatic applied way, we've got to look outside in at the changing world to stay relevant, as well as look inside out within ourselves and our organizations to be able to find the opportunities for leverage. So, you know, you look outside in for relevance and resilience inside out for leverage, for your strengths, for your competencies. I'm interested in an example of an organization that has been, has really demonstrated resilience pre-COVID and during the past year where we've seen that they've really risen to the challenge and the changing face of, um, of, of their business. If I had to think about an organization that to me demonstrates resilience, the one that comes to mind mostly, top of mind, maybe because I admire it so much, happens to be an East African company, Safaricom. Now, Safaricom is a telco, but Safaricom has managed to grow to the point where it is larger in market capitalization than all the banks in Kenya combined. How did they do this? They are purpose-led. And I think there's something about Ankan meaning to be resilient, purpose-led. Can we talk about, you know, creating value for your clients? And how do we do that and embed, embed that in strategy? I actually think it's both complicated and simple. So perhaps I'm going to start with the simple bit. Is the simple bit okay. exists in all of us. And, and really it's got to do with leadership and culture as much as strategy. And, and if, you, if we want to create value for our customers, if we want to have a customer-centric culture, the key, and it's a simple key, is to be employee-centric. If we care about, if we focus on, if we nurture and value and understand our staff, our employees, the chances are they are going to care about, nurture and grow our customers. So, so for me, the, the, the key question is how do I engage? 
How do you engage? We are all strategists. We all make choices. We all try to win what we hope for, what we aspire to. So we are actually good at strategy. But what the book in, tries to do is to amp up that engagement through looking at some of the established theory and models that exist out there, not just applying it as those models have been intended to, to organizations, but understanding how they can help us engage more effectively in our own lives. So engagement is really what it's all about. And that's why the book, you know, the subtitle of the book is engaging with strategy in your organization and your life. And I really do believe that we can use some of these simple tools, they're filters, they help us filter the complexity to get the clear priorities that are important for each of us based on our passion and our purpose. So take us through some of those frameworks and tools that could actually help all of us um, with like give us practical examples that we can take away today and go and implement it in our lives. I'm, I'm a bit uh, hesitant to put this up without context because um, commercially, as you possibly know in class, I often put this up <clears throat> only to get a response from the students, oh, this looks busy. And I have to <laughs> say, busy. you know, strategy is busy. Mm -hmm. But the reason I keep the slide in my deck is because the conversation isn't complex, even if the slide looks complex. And strategy is complex because there are many change points happening simultaneously. But the questions we need to ask on an ongoing basis, because the world is changing in a dynamic way, we ask these questions continually to be strategic, to engage in a strategic conversation. What's going on today? The blue box. Where are we going to in the future? The green box. What are our options? And then how do we take action? Now, I want to say one more thing, if I may, um, Commissioner, now that I've got the slide up. When we ask the today question and we observe the changes going on, we need to appreciate that there will be gaps emerging in the organization strategy. Why are gaps emerging? Because there's change out in the operating environment and there's change in the organization. The thing is gaps, which are opportunities for us or threats to us, are our friend. The strategist looks for gaps. We want to understand those gaps because we can turn the gaps into options, strategic options, which is step three. Now, when we have a future orientated conversation, where are we going to? What's our aspiration? We think about the future long-term, which is our vision aligned with our purpose, and short-term, what are our objectives for this operating period, for this calendar year? And when we identify our future positioning, a second set of gaps emerges. And guys, I hope you can see that. We create that second set of gaps by positioning the future as an aspiration ahead of where we are today. Now we have two gap areas, the gaps from today's changing world and the gaps we artificially create by aspiring to a particular destination. All of those gaps, opportunities and threats can be turned into step three options. And then of course, the job of the strategist is to ask which options, which are the options that will build resilience, that will help us stay relevant, that will allow us to be leveraged and differentiated. Today, future options, actions, fueled by gaps. Well, thank you so much. I really uh, loved this opportunity and appreciate all the great questions. And this is, I, I really feel passionate about these concepts that we're sharing today. And I really look forward to an ongoing strategic conversation with all of you, wherever the opportunity arises. So thank you so much, Commissioner and the GSP for the opportunity.